Welcome back to the platform of Royal Phoenix Rising. Thank you all for joining me yet again. For those who are new to my YouTube platform, my name is Lilith. I am a spiritualist, a spiritual advisor. I am highly gifted. I am a high priestess, a divine feminine, an earth angel, a star seed, and the list goes on. Welcome back to my YouTube platform. I hope you are in perfect health and spirit. Peace, love, and light be unto you. I'd first like to start by giving honor and gratitude to my spiritual entourage, my spiritual entourage, my ancestors, the divine spirit of life, the universe, the cosmic elders, my archangels, and my fairies. Thank you all for all that you all have done in favor of my loved ones and I. We humbly love and appreciate you. Ashe. So today, I've decided to share with you all my experience, my recent experience of my initiation and how it all came about. Now the first half I'm going to read, I'm going to read because I've written it down. In the second half, I'm going to speak freely. Okay? So getting started. Life is what you make it. It's, look at, it's looking at a glass half empty or, this, or deciding that this glass is half full. Life is all about the choices that we make. And one of those major, major choices is how we choose to view our life circumstances. The day that I got that I got out of court regarding my children's case is the day my life changed. I had a major awakening. I first awakened to the fact that now it's time for me to give back to humanity in addition to this awakening. I received a download from my ancestors to make peace with the bloodlines that we were at war with. I'm talking about my royal bloodline. Before my journey began, I died. I experienced a major ego death. During this period, I was in solitude, in resting mode to receive downloads from my ancestors and also strengthen my bond with them. In the beginning of my transition, which was the death period, I felt alone. I felt isolated. And I felt lonely. I guess I can say that I was looking at the glass half empty. I was reflecting back on my life and life in general to understand life from a deeper perspective. I look back on all that I've experienced leading up until now. I reflected on the people that I've attracted into my life and I began to understand karma and the laws of attractions even more. Those were, those were moments spent reflecting and trying to understand life from a higher level of awareness. I understood later towards the end of my death transition that now is a time to rebuild my life and myself on a much firm foundation which centers spirituality and fulfilling my life's mission. Now that I have developed this understanding, I asked myself, what am I most passionate about? My ancestors and the universe then began to give me signs which pinpointed my childhood dreams. Even then, 
I was slightly confused, given that I am highly gifted and I'm passionate about all that I do. But my ancestors were trying to guide me to remember one major thing that I cared passionately about because this dream included, included being the change that I so deeply wanted to see in the world. After spending a few days in solitude, I began my journey. I traveled to Tel Aviv and I went back to the neighborhood of which I lived back in 2014. I went there to film the location of where I lived for my next project. From there, I went to spend time at the beach to ground myself. While being there, I reflected more on my life as I watched the waves and listened to my music. I took my cards along with me, so I pulled them out trying to gain more clarity for my ancestors and the divine. I felt deeply that they were trying to present to me a business idea, but I wasn't quite understanding. Upon returning home, I walked through the area of where I once lived for the second time when I began to receive downloads about the living conditions of the homeless as I walked past them. Those downloads led to me reminiscing on my 2014 experience while I lived there. I lived in a somewhat studio apartment that was very poor. My children's father of my three years abusive relationship impregnated me and gotten arrested when I was just two months pregnant for selling drugs. That left me in a situation to care for myself. The neighborhood was and still is to be one of is known to be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods located in Israel. But there I was, left alone, yet again, to fend for myself and protect myself. He had a friend who was considered to be one of his closest friends. This particular person, indeed, was just that. He was hooked on ice, but he had a heart of gold. He too sold drugs. So the day that I returned back from my hometown from, visit, from visiting my children, he was there. I got home to the entire place being flipped. Given that the doors were typical wooden doors that were very cheap, our home was broken into and our things were stolen. In that neighborhood, it was a thing for people to break into the homes of their friends who would get arrested. It's the ghetto. Everyone's in survival mode. And everyone needs to survive.